I was a regional official and I worked for the GMB for 12 years after a couple of years being a shop steward. I was a waitress at a casino in London, which was kind of a hellhole for women to work in. So I decided to stand as shop steward. And a couple of years later, I got more involved in the GMB with casinos. There was a national campaign in a company called Stanley Casinos. So we recruited hundreds in there, um, enough to run a pay campaign and secure a pay rise through the first lot of pay talks that that company had ever done. I did a lot of work with the casinos when I was in London and also some work in the care sector. And then when I moved over to Yorkshire, went into schools. So cleaners, classroom assistants, lunchtime supervisors, the kitchen staff, um, spent a lot of years organising those workers. We recruited thousands of members, my team, doing that during those years. I still have best friends that I see and speak to all the time that I made at the GMB, um, and that's not going to change. But it was a very hard environment also to function in as a woman. For the first two years that I worked for the GMB, uh, I was sexually abused and psychologically abused by a colleague. I had the support of my line manager um, at the time who did not have the full story. He did everything he could to support me um, and would say, come on, what would you tell a member to do? What would you tell a member to do? I had good friends in the London region at the GMB who also could see with their own eyes some of what was happening and also tried to encourage me to, to raise a complaint, but it just didn't feel possible. I wanted to come back up to Yorkshire and I asked for a transfer, which I was given. But I got, I got silent phone calls right up until the day that I left the GMB. And I'm pretty sure that those silent phone calls were coming from the original perpetrator. Yorkshire Region was a positive experience in places. There were some fantastic people, some great work done. But I ended up leaving the GMB because of a, a, a sexual attack in a workplace from one of the branch secretaries, which kind of triggered the whole thing. So I had, I had a breakdown uh, nearly a year away from work um, and I realised that I couldn't go back. The environment as a whole was very hard to, to navigate anyway. There was um, an event every year, the, the Yorkshire Region Branch Weekend, which I described to my regional secretary at the time as a gauntlet of abuse, especially in the evening at the social. There was a lot of drinking a lot of harassment, um, a lot of inappropriate language and behaviour. When I tried to raise the incidents at the branch weekend, I was told that that would happen on any night out. I just started to disappear in front of my own eyes. I didn't maintain my mental health. I really tried. We're in workplaces demanding high standards of treatment for our members. We're demanding that workplaces aren't sex sexist and misogynistic on behalf of our female members. But it's like, we, we don't matter. It's like, this will be acceptable in our workplace because we're lucky to be here in the first place. Some expectations for TSSA were that things would be different. They had a very active equalities agenda. They appeared to be very supportive of colleagues with mental health issues. It seemed like a, a fresh new opportunity when I started there. I was working on the organising team to organise all the areas of the transport industry that we covered. One of my projects was to um, put on a women's conference, which I did, um, which was a good event, at which the General Secretary stood next to me and encouraged the delegates to go away and recruit women into the TSSA and said, TSSA is the union who will demand good standards of treatment for women in the workplace. Christmas party in 2018 went for a meal there was a lot of drinking a lot of Christmas spirit if you like um and then in one of the pubs later on the general secretary came over to me put his arm over my front and asked to kiss me I said to him you're my boss and he, he went away he was taken away by other colleagues but then he came back over and said I'm being told I'm not allowed to kiss you do you want to go outside another colleague came over and we went off to the to the ladies' loos to, to stand in there. Um, and when I got back, he had gone. After a lot of deliberation, discussing it with my partner at the time, um, I decided to 
raise a complaint. I was invited to use a new part of TSSA policy, which was a, a form of mediation um, rather than using the grievance procedure, uh, which I really regret now. I should have raised a grievance and had it investigated as a grievance. We met in Manchester. He was accompanied by someone from HR. I was accompanied by my GMB rep. He looked me in the eye and he said to me, I don't remember doing this, but I know that I did do it because you say that I did it. I was very drunk. I don't remember anything. I know that isn't an excuse. It won't happen again. And I said, well, thank you for apologizing. I told him some of what had happened to me at the GMB and about how that made it doubly as disappointing to have had that happen. Um, he said, sorry again. And we shook hands and he left the room. And um, my GMB rep and I, felt that that had gone really well and I felt I felt ready to move on I don't know why but at the time I felt sorry for him he looked upset he looked sorry and I thought that will be enough you know I, I can keep my job because that had been a discussion with the people I'd taken advice from am I likely to keep my job if I raise this um, I was told that it had happened a lot of times before that if I did raise a complaint I would be the first woman to do so other people have witnessed Manuel being ushered out of venues and placed in a taxi by Frank Ward, the Deputy General Secretary. Somebody said to me, look, you know that Manuel's not even allowed to attend as left socials anymore because of his behaviour towards women. Six months after the incident at the Christmas party, a whole lot of us were in Glasgow for a network rail event where there was a meal on the first night. I was sitting at a table opposite a colleague of mine and she said to me, Manuel, he's really staring at you. So I looked over at him and he was really staring at me. So I looked over a few more times and he was still staring. And she said to me, this is really uncomfortable. If you need a witness to that, just let me know. We all ended up back in the hotel bar where Manuel was again, extremely drunk. He smashed a load of glasses by accident um, and followed me around the room, um, stood behind me saying, hey, hey, how are you? Um, which made me feel really uncomfortable. I actually blamed myself at the time because I'd sought Manuel out at the beginning in the, of the evening, <laughs> like an idiot, to shake his hand and say, hi, you know, it's nice to see you again. That was my way of saying, this is the first time we've working together since I complained to you about your behavior to me. And I'm just letting you know that we're okay. I was like, I guess I was trying to protect myself um, you know, and make it nice again. Um, and maybe, maybe he took that as an invitation or a signal, but whether he did or he didn't, he, you know, he chose to continue his harassment of me that night by following me around, staring at me and standing behind me too close to the point where two other colleagues came over, pretended that I smoke and said, do you want to come outside with us for a cigarette? I said, sure, let's do that. And as we were leaving, they said, we just thought it was better that you came out of the room. It's no fun accusing your superior, the general secretary of the entire bloody union that you work for or are trying to work for of sexual harassment. There's nothing fun about that. You know, it's, it's much better if you can live your life and go about your, your duties without having to do that. I said at the time, why, why aren't people joining together and organizing on this issue. This is clearly a collective workplace matter. The response I got was nobody wants to lose their job. I've seen people in fear of their jobs before. I know what that looks like and I know the reasons for it, but I've never seen anything like the fear that people seem to feel at TSSA. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I've organized in some crappy workplaces, some scary workplaces. There'll be questions raised over your performance. That's what happened to me and that's what's happening to another colleague right now. I think it was a couple of processes that I went through. I passed them both, but then concerns were raised over my performance again. Two colleagues of mine left while I was still employed by TSSA um, because of the culture. This is a small group of people who have a lot of power over a small trade union. And if you want to work there, your face has to fit. And if it doesn't, you will soon know. I had mental health issues, so I had complex PTSD and panic disorder when I left the GMB. Um, that was under, under a certain amount of control when I started at the TSSA, but the incident with Manuel triggered it again and I started to struggle. 
with the symptoms of com complex PTSD. So flashbacks, fatigue, depression, anxiety, um, irrational thoughts. I was drinking a lot more than I would have liked to have been drinking. Beyond offering to pay for counselling, which was very useful in part, HR was siding with Manuel and seeking to get rid of me. I was at a colleague's house following a night in the pub with Frank Ward and Lorraine Ward. She'd overheard a conversation between me and Luke Chester where I was saying to him that the some of the reps that we were working with were sexist um, and some of them were racist and that I was finding that really unacceptable. Um, so her way of dealing with that was to say, well, what are your ideas? So we'd all had lots to drink. Uh, we'd been having a good time. Suddenly the atmosphere was hostile and I was under the, under the spotlight. I was deep in performance management at this point. This was also after the incident in Glasgow. So my situation was pressurized to say the least. I drank a lot that night and missed my train. Luke Chester said it was okay to stay at his house as I had before without incident. We were, we were kind of pals and drinking buddies. But when we got to his house that night, I was talking to him about what had just happened with Lorraine Ward and saying, do you think it's going to be OK? You know, I'm I'm really worried now. And he just said, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice now. I think you're broken. You need to get your shit together. The reps don't want to work with you because you're crap. And then he, he, he said, look, I'm not um, I'm not a nasty guy. When my girlfriend gives me a blowjob, I put a pillow under her knees. And then he said. I am not trying to get a blowjob here, but if you can show me that you care about this union, I can take your problems away. He was threatening me and he was, he was gaslighting me. It was sexual harassment because of the language that he used, but at the same time, he wasn't propositioning me. He was, he was going for misogynistic abuse, let's say. By the time COVID came about, my mental health was shot anyway. Um, and I, I, I was absolutely thrilled to be furloughed because it just took me out of the, the whole thing. I didn't have to, to speak to any of, any of these people. I came back to work in January. During that time, I was meeting with a group of colleagues on a weekly basis where we would try to come up with a way to be safe at work, a way to stop these things from happening. But then I got word that my line manager was leaving our team and that there would be a new line manager. And as soon as I heard that, my heart fell through the floor because I knew that Luke Chester was going to go for that job and I knew that he was going to get it. And I knew that he was going to become my line manager and all of those things happened. My mental health just, you know, plummeted. It, it, I, I couldn't function. I couldn't stop crying. So I called in sick. Um, I had to call him to call in sick. And then later that day, I got a letter inviting me to a stage three capability hearing. I just thought, I have, you know, this isn't fair. I'm gonna get sacked at that meeting and I need to raise a grievance. So I raised a grievance about the whole lot, about everything that had happened. Most of my witnesses weren't contacted. Some of the witnesses who were spoke, spoken to lied um, or chose not to speak, having said that they would. So for me, the, the investigation and the outcome of that grievance was falsified following that incident at the Christmas party in 2018. I was told three times by line, my line manager that there was a package on the table for me, an exit package, should I ever wish to discuss it. Last year, 2021, I realized that it was time to discuss that package. And I was told that there was no such thing and that that had never been said to me. Eventually through a series of meetings, we managed to, to come to an agreement over an amount of money that we would be paid to me. Um, and to have that money paid to me, I would sign an agreement um, agreeing not to speak, not to speak ill of TSSA in public, basically not to talk about what had happened. A lot of talented women have been lost to the trade union and labour movement. A lot of women who had a lot of things to offer aren't there anymore because they've been mobbed out by misogynistic abuse. If trade unions were to stop using NDAs and stopping people from speaking about their experiences, it would spark a culture change and all members would be able to flourish under that culture change, men and women. Women would be able to work in peace uh, without fighting off various mental health conditions 
and and the, the, the problems that are brought about from misogynistic abuse and sexual harassment and men would be able to flourish without having those expectations put upon them, the expectations that they'll close their eyes to it and the expectation that they'll join in with it. The most recent incident at a different conference that I know of with Manuel is when he and the former General Secretary of the GMB, Tim Roach, were passing a drunken, incapable cabinet MP between themselves. Clearly nobody is learning anything. The thing that we need to do is unfortunate but very obvious. We need to speak about it and do what we would tell our members to do. This is a collective workplace issue. It is ruining people's lives. It's leaving people without their jobs. So for God's sake, we need to come together and speak out about it and insist that it ends and get rid of the perpetrators.